Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're back. After a, a hiatus, there's a word, uh, we've been on holiday, both Eugene. Uh, this is, by the way, this is Eugene Clark, Professor Hello. Of Hi out there, everybody in podcast land. Yeah, uh, uh, of art, Professor Emeritus of art. And yeah, I'm Matt Faulkner, painter, Matt Faulkner. drawer. Extraordinaire, artist and all around good guy who makes really good smoothies. But what are you drinking today? Oh, this is OJ. You're drinking some caffeine. You've got caffeine, the OJ, right? I've got the, the coffee, which no, I brought I back from my travels. I brought this back, this, that I'm, not this, which, but the, what's in it. That brings up the subject of our, of our uh, talk today. We're not gonna talk art so much. I mean, that'll come up because that's what we do. It's gonna come up anyways, but we're gonna talk about the trips we went on. Uh, have you ever gone over to your uh, uncle's house or your aunt and they say, look, we went to uh, New Jersey, sure. And we're gonna show you pictures of that. And you get You're all like, excited. Oh. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna That's do. You get. Oh, oh, but before we Don't do that, Eugene, to get, I've got to, I've got to, what does that say, Eugene? Oh, it says hashtag yeah. get vexed. Da, 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 get, do it, do it. Okay, I'm done with my reactionary. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, seriously, get a vaccine. Okay, okay. All right. Let's just all do it. Now, next thing. Um, Eugene's going to go first. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen. And Eugene, where did you go? We went to a little place in Michigan where you and I are both residing currently. And it is known as Mackinac Island. And the uh -huh. picture that you're looking at is a picture of uh, my daughter sitting on a ferry that's about 25 minutes in duration. Uh, to get from the mainland to this island known as Mackinac Island. And that is one of two lighthouses that you see as you uh, get close to departing on said island. Wow. So this is going to or coming back from? Well, this is, uh, this is the arrival. So this is our day wow. where, we, uh, where we arrived. I just have to say, this is, this looks beatific. Uh, I don't know what's the, it is still early in the morning for me anyways, I can't think of words, but oh my God, what a picture. This is, this place looks um, like marine heaven. You know, Look. it really is. If you like the water and you, your idea of a good time is hanging out on an island, uh, I can't think of a better place than Mackinac Island. Although, you know, some people uh have this vision of being in a place where they can lay on the sand and i get it um i'm not one of those people so we choose mackinac island as a family and we actually go on memorial weekend we've been going for 20 years uh we started you know prior before we had kids and then we just kept it going so we reminisce about how we brought each child over on the ferry when they were you know just a few months old and they've been wow. going over. So it's it's one of those things they truly talk about throughout the year. They look forward to going. Uh, once we get there, they talk about how they want to live there. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Everybody does. Pretty, I say, yeah, I know. It, it just sort of, uh, you become absorbed by the culture on this island. And, you know, um, one of the most unique aspects is that there are no automobiles. Yeah, like so. When you look at downtown street, street, you can see horses, wow. horse-drawn carriages or buggies, and then also a lot of bicycles. And that's a lot of bicycles. Uh, yeah. You can imagine uh, when you get there during the day when people come over on the boats. A lot of people are just day trippers. Uh, yeah. We happen to stay on the island because that's how we first experienced Mackinac. And so in our minds, we wouldn't have it any other way because there's something a little bit different that you experience when you stay on the island as opposed to 
just coming for the day. Although I will never say no to a day trip to Mackinac. Oh, yeah. Either way, it's going to be good. It's all medicinal. It all it's works. All so you have these very authentic uh, storefronts that when you look at them, they really appear similar to the way they appeared probably a hundred or more years yeah. ago when this place was first forming. And so it's pretty cool to step back in time and go to a place like Mackinac. I always say it's like going to Greenfield Village, but you actually get to stay there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and now this picture, I'm wicked jealous. That's what we say in Massachusetts. I'm wicked jealous. This is where you stayed? So that's where we stayed. And many what? people uh, see this place as they're going on their bike ride. If you know of the resort known as Mission Point, uh, which is really the furthest point from the, the boat docks before you enter the road that just takes you around the entire island, which is eight miles. So um, I'm bicycle, uh, usually people do it. Uh, so this place is called Small Point and it's a bed and breakfast and it's run by uh, second generation owners. So the cool thing is when my wife and I first started going to the island and staying overnight, we stayed at this place and the owners were the parents of the per person that now runs it, which is the son, he and his wife. And uh, so we started at this place for a few years and then we sort of bounced around to different locations. And then about five or six years ago, we found ourselves back here and the new ownership, uh, that being the sun, they really upgraded this place and made it uh, irresistible to families like ours. And if you look at the very top, so you see the chimney in the middle and then yep. there's a little window behind it that is actually where we stay. We stay up on the third floor and there's a small room up there with a queen size bed and two bunk beds. And then it has that really cool, the window you see is that part that comes out a little bit, that little nook. And that's where the dresser is and a little closet. And for some reason uh, that has just sort of become our domain. <laughs> we, you know, they have other rooms that are on the second level that are much nicer than this room, I would say, if you compare them. But um, my family wouldn't have it any other way. Like they just love being up on the third floor in this little, you know, what probably was an attic and it was just redone <laughs> into a bedroom. Beautiful. And no air conditioning because it's always cool up there there's, at night. There's no air conditioning. It does get quite warm up there. Um, one of the days that we were there, even though it was only in the, uh, high 60s um you could feel the heat gathering so they open the windows there's fans in the rooms and i can't imagine yeah. being up there in the summer though that might be a little much so yeah, uh yeah there when we are yeah okay so um how far away is this from where you get off the uh the ferry so if you get off the ferry it's probably a uh, a bike ride that lasts maybe seven minutes um, you know, if so you were you walking, to, what's you that? Have to take one of these? Did you have to take one of these guys to get your, your luggage over to the place? You know, you could, but what we do is we bring a bike carrier and we pretty much put everything in our bike carrier and we bring our bikes, you know, you have to pay extra, but when you get on the Island, um, that's the best way to get around. And quite frankly, yeah. if you're one of these people like me, who really loves to exercise, uh, I'm, I'm kidding about that. I don't exercise as much as I should, but when you're on Mackinac, you get a lot of exercise. So whether you're yep. walking, biking, that's part of the deal and it's really great. So cool. these are set up, these are taxis, what you're looking at here. Um, and it's for people that may not want a bike ride or they can't. And so it's a really great way. Uh, it's very easy to get one of these and it'll take you anywhere on the island. Beautiful. Uh, now I can I see too that you were assaulted by uh, <laughs> the, these horrible uh, beasts up there. <laughs> they do have a little butterfly house, and my daughter Ruby uh, sat very still because there's so many butterflies. They eventually will land on you, and so <laughs> she didn't know that was on her hat until I took a picture. And then uh, there's another photo of her holding 
a little card that has pictures of the butterflies and, and one landed on that and she was so excited and you know I, I don't know it, that type of thing you know you can you can go to butterfly houses at zoos and different places um they just happen to have one on Mackinac but that never gets old either you know hanging out with butterflies yeah now <laughs> There's a fort there too, right? There is. So I know you're a history buff, Mr. Faulkner, based on uh, some of our discussions, but especially uh, a lot of the illustrations that you do for a variety of, of books that you've either written or illustrated for other authors. Uh, you really hit the history trail and do your research. So I know that uh, Mackinac would be a place for you because it combines the best of being on an island and vacationing, but also learning about history. You go to this fort and they do demonstrations where they shoot this cannon. They also shoot um, the, uh, they're not muzzle loaders, but they're just after the muzzle loaders. So they're rice, rifles that were authentic to when this fort was in use. And uh, you get to walk through all the barracks and all the different uh, buildings that are within the fort. And they're all set up museum-like so that you get to really understand, you know, how people lived and, you know, the history of, of uh, when the island was taken over by, uh, by the English and, uh, you know, and then, and then when it was taken back by the Americans, <laughs> stuff like that. Way cool. And look yeah, at this. It was involved in the War of 1812, so we know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is a picture, some, some nice tourists took a picture of us. There's the whole fam. And this is one of the famous spots on the island that you can either bike ride up and get really close, or you can bike ride on the lower part, which we did, and you can get a picture of yours. It's called Arch Rock. So it's a rock that the formation is in an arch form. So there are people up there looking down through the arch or you're looking from down up into the, it's just a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, geological formation that people uh, enjoy taking photos of. Hmm. Look at this. <laughs> arch wow. rock. So when you're at the fort, there is a little restaurant up there and I always recommend to people, hey, if you get a chance, go up there, have lunch and you'll have some of the best photo opportunities. And so this is taken while we're eating our lunch up at the fort. And it's just a great way to get that panoramic, uh, wow. classic view of Mackinac. Ooh, wow. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the, in addition to, okay, well, uh, going rock hunting. I, I mean, yeah. that's one of the things that's too. There's no sandy beaches up there. <laughs> There's no sandy beaches. One of our favorite things, I swear to God, we do this every day we're there, sometimes for a lot longer than I would care to do it. But the kids look for rocks to skip and there are plenty available and they try and outdo each other. And it just becomes this, we call it the rock, rock skipping contest, even though there's mm -hmm. no contest. And so every year we joke about there's going to be some guy next to us doing the same thing. So we always we always pretend that we're having a contest between us and these other people. And oh, my gosh, so much fun. OK, uh, look at now. That's not. Yeah, I was going to say, look at me. I'm wrong. But that's still that's about <laughs> as sandy as it gets right down in the front right there. Yeah. So so the, the yellow awnings on the left behind the, the shore there, uh, that's the Mission Point Resort. And right. so we were having lunch out there. They have a, a really cool little mini golf course that's almost like miniature golf, but it's literally a mini version of a golf course. And uh, you can play that, but you can have food right in the middle of it and have drinks. And so I walked over and shot this while we were uh, enjoying that moment. So you did play golf? Yeah, did we played golf? golf on that little mini course and the kids love it. It's, it's a very unique style of mini golf it doesn't have the windmills and the you know the things that you have to shoot it's yeah, it's, it's like a version of a golf course like chip and putt you know you got to chip the ball onto the green and right that kind of thing yeah no? yeah and yep. it's okay. just a really fun experience in addition to all the other stuff you can do so beautiful 
And then uh, lastly, we have somebody went horseback riding. <laughs> this was That's our first cool. year to take this in, Mr. Faulkner. You know, you have to be 10 years old. And my daughter turned 10, so uh, she was all about this. And Melissa is behind her. And they it's a guided tour, so they take you for an hour up through. It's a, it's a state park, the whole island is. So there's lots of trails to either hike or ride horses or bicycles. <laughs> and so that's another really cool part of staying on the island, you get to do something like this. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I think that's all of the pitches. Yay. Awesome. Let's talk about your trip. All right. All right. We can do that. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, we got this guy. This is, not part of, this is not part of the trip. This is our new uh, roommate. His name is Milo. He's Milo. showing me how to, oops, he's showing me how to do yoga here. Just thought I'd put him oh in there. He and where's Milo? Less... Right? Say what? And where where's Milo right now? Uh, he's lying down somewhere. I don't know where. I, and it's a good question because uh, he uh, he's a rascal. He's a little outlaw. You can see it in his eyes. Um, <laughs> and uh, he definitely likes to sleep between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. And then that's he gets up at 11 to do the night shift and run around and go crazy. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. All oh. right. So moving forward, uh, we do have. And um, so we went to Maine in our trip. This oh. is uh, me out at the uh, end of what they call a breakwater. Uh, at, at Penobscot Harbor, Penobscot Bay. And uh, so I'll show another picture of this in a little bit. Uh, we drove out there over two days and took an extra day to come back, which was smarter because it's it was like an 18 hour drive. Oh my um, so um, yeah, it was cold there. It's actually uh, the weather there was what I would like summer to always be. Uh, <laughs> 50 degrees at night and 68 degrees during the day. That's oh. summer. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you know, um, it's funny yeah. because I, I feel the same way when you when you go to a place like Maine or even Mackinac I think that's more typical you get that, that kind of weather yeah I mean why not why shouldn't that be summer so uh unfortunately though um you know it snows like uh nobody's business in Maine during the winter so uh yeah I'm not uh sure that I want to be there then but um so we did, you know, it was masks off in Maine at this point, and we decided to give that a try. And uh, this is my, me and my, my wife, Chris, having a beer. Oh, I'm gonna show, hold on a second, I gotta move this over. Stop it, there we go. Um, we're in this little town of Rockland, Maine. Beautiful. And just, just a little diner and, uh, out the back window, I, I can imagine because we were so close to the that could actually be like a little lobster trap back there uh, through the window. We were right close to the pier, so you know you're basically getting fish that came off the boat that morning. So that was pretty cool. And, oh my god! Uh, it was just delightful. It was a little towny, you know, diner, and uh, everything had fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys uh, did you guys partake on any particular seafood? Um, Chris had a scallop salad. I didn't. What did I, I think I just had a Reuben that night, um, which was nice. Um, but later on, like the, yeah, there's a lot of it, they pride themselves on lobster uh, rolls and um, clam chowder and stuff like that. So yeah, we. Uh, we try different things uh, and it's amazing. Like the cost of lobster is just skyrocketed out of crazy town. Um, so like one lobster sandwich roll, basically like a hot dog with a lot of lobster and it was, I think like 30, $34. So oh, uh, that, that yeah. you would think that the prices would be a little bit cheaper because of your proximity to the lobster. I think, you know, I think what's going on is the pandemic um you know a lot of things were since nobody was eating uh the fishermen weren't set up and so they're they're like making money back now that people are starting to go out to eat 
but also um, it's just the cost. Uh, and, and also probably something about the, you know, uh, the lowering of the population of lobsters around the world because we're, you know, pollution and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, anyway, we we had a great time in that place. Um, let me close this one and I will get this is uh, the rug that was in the resort we stayed in. That was scary. Oh, just thought, just thought you'd appreciate the rug. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. It looks like patterns from maybe things that you would see on the shoreline if you were, you know, walking on some of the the rocky uh, shorelines, and they might have patterns. Well, like. It, it was just frightening to me to see first thing in the morning when I was going out to get coffee for my wife. So uh, yes, now that I look at it with your eye, I can say, yes, there is something. But it, at the time, I just wanted to share this photo because I, I, I was terrified. <laughs> you know, Matt, you can't get yeah. away from the art, can you? No, you, no. Um, sometimes you do want to, though, like in, in regard to this rug. Uh, <laughs> and so let me skip over to here. Um, <laughs> Remember I showed you that that house that was at the end of the breakwater. This is the actual oh, yeah. length of the breakwater. Uh, oh. I'm, I've turned I've turned around so the house is now behind the camera. It's almost a mile uh, the length of this breakwater. So every morning I would go out and walk the length of this thing. It looks it looks fairly um, safe and sound from here, but I tell you what. Um, that was a real kind of a tricky uh, walk. There were gaps in the stones, a good, like those cracks there. They don't look like much, but you could get your foot caught in there and it goes straight I down bet. to the water, you know? So, Holy. and there were young people jogging on there. I was kind of amazed at that. And there was a sign that said, you know, if it starts to get cloudy, get off of the breakwater right away because people die regularly from being hit oh. by lightning on the breakwater. Oh my God. Or I would imagine... If it's windy, couldn't you oh, yeah. maybe get blown into the water? Oh yeah, yeah, and that's you know um, that water is pretty rough there. So, and I'm not sure how you'd be able to get back up on it. So, um, yeah. it was it was like main main exercise, you know, kind of like rough and dangerous. And uh, this is how we get our exercise in in Maine. Uh, so that was fun. Um, so yeah, we were staying in in this town called Rockland. Um, in this golf resort. Uh, I'm not a golfer. Uh, we just happened to uh, become uh, owners of a timeshare at this place. So uh, I loved going through the town. Uh, all of these old, old, like, like at uh, Mackinac houses from the 1800s, a lot of them are fallen down. Uh, they're just not taken care of. Uh, but this place was. Um, just a tree stump that uh, some uh, fairy folk and elves uh, had turned into a home for themselves. That was nice. Uh, <laughs> but you, you can see like <laughs> the background in the house there uh, just kind of falling apart. It was, it was kind of oh, sad, yeah. but also beautiful. It was so, the town was so lived in, you know, like you, know, you could just say, oh yeah, people have been here for 250 years. That's, um, um, hold on. Oh yeah. So, uh, I don't have as many pictures as you do. You did. Um, uh, I did happen. Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, on the end, on our porch, I noticed that uh, there were a lot of these guys oh. uh, down on the grounds on the golf course. So I just, I bought a bag of peanuts and put them up on our porch and they got used to me and I, I would do my yoga while they, uh, they hopped up on there and kept an eye ah. on me and got ah. a couple of peanuts. So that was fun. Big, yeah, really cool. big ravens, yeah. Oh my! How fun and, is that? Uh, there's a town a bit north of it <clears throat> uh, called uh, Camden, which I don't, I don't know if you can properly. This is out the back of a little shop called the Laughing Cow. Um, <laughs> and hold on, I'm gonna move this over so you can see this here. Um, I just walked out the back. You know, I, I walk in, this was a place that my fam, my mom used to love, called, like I said, this little shop called Laughing Cow. It's just, a, you know, a little gift shop. But I walk out the back, there's no announcement, and there's this. I open the door onto this deck. Now, the deck 
I don't know if you can see there, but this is a little waterfall here and a freshwater stream comes down from the mountains up behind the town and around this corner and then down off or over this waterfall into the bay. Oh my gosh. And this was right oh. under the deck that was right there. I was like, oh my God, this is so picturesque. Yeah. Just, yeah. They need to have like a little table and chairs for you to just hang out for the day right there. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Now all along this front right here, you know, to the left and the right were a lot of these old buildings, just like on Mackinac, you know, restaurants, shops and stuff like that. But one of the things that was lovely about these little towns too is that they're working, it's not just a uh, pleasure craft out there. That's a lobster boat, that's a lobster. I don't know, I don't know if they're lobster, but I know that they look like working fishing boats. They could wow. be you know, trolling for oyster, uh, I mean, scallops. And then this is a three-masted schooner that looks like it's a working boat. So, I mean, it's, it's just to see the functioning uh, harbor was really cool to me that it's, it is yeah. a sailing ship harbor still working. Now, um, a couple of more pictures here. Uh, drove past this place, didn't know oh. what it was, got, got closer. This was in another town, oops. Um, it is the shop and it, how do I describe this? So this building is probably from uh, 18, I didn't read the date, but it looks like 1870s, 1880s. When the Thomaston prison was built, this was, I think the administration building and the prison was behind here. Oh my God. And, now the prison got torn down after a big fire in uh, the 1920s, 1920s, I think. Um, and I think it was rebuilt, but it has since again been torn down. Uh, but this building was left and all of the prisons in Maine, the guys have the opportunity and the women who are in prison to make stuff and they can sell it in this shop. So it went in there and there was a lot of cool things in there. Also behind it, I found out that this was the prison that they made the movie Shawshank Redemption about. Ah, very So cool. there was, yeah, I got that t-shirt for my stepson. He appreciated that uh, property of Shawshank prison. Uh, <laughs> and, and of course in the shop, they had to have, um, uh, you know, ball and chain irons <laughs> for, your, for your leg. I like uh, that a lot. And for every married couple. Yeah, you gotta you gotta strap one of those on. So that's that for my pictures. Wow. Well, Maine and Mackinac never disappoint. Um, I'm so uh, ecstatic to see all of the wonderful photos that you shared, and it makes me want to go there right now. Well, you know, one of the things I know we're coming to the end, but one of the things that I, I want to acknowledge too with both of the, our, the photos is that, you know, for artists to be able to get out of Dodge, to just pack up and go someplace else, even for a couple of days, it, like they say, when you're eating a fine meal, it cleanses the palate. It opens your eyes to uh, stop seeing everything like, well, yeah, I've seen that before, you know, so yeah, definitely to go to Mackinac, to go to Maine and see these worlds. Like I would like, I was fascinated by, uh, you know, this prison or or the working harbor. That stuff wakes up my imagination again and gets me to like just feel like I got to make stuff. I got to create things. Uh, oh yeah. What do you think about that? Oh my gosh, so much so. Um, I. Uh... Give me one second and I'll share my screen with you. So I'm not, I'm not ending our session here. I was just gonna show you a couple things that I found that I, that I tied in to art making. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of them because they looked pretty fascinating to me. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna take photos of these and who knows? What, who knows what I might do? And this is just a piece of rusty old metal that's in one part of the shore on Mackinac, um, where some of this stuff, I don't know if it washed up or why it's there, but you can see with the stones and the rusty metal, how 
control and the shadows. Uh, it just was a great photo op, but also, you know, if you're into assemblage and found object art, uh, and then you've got stuff like this that I found really fascinating because, you know, the wood takes on a, a new life when it looks like this to me and it becomes so sun drenched uh, mm. and and then to see the stones laying on the piece of metal like this and I almost felt like this was a face you know that first fold looks like the eyes and then there's the mouth uh, below and the nose is that little rock in the middle <laughs> yeah that's great yeah yeah, yeah. See, like it's waking up your eye yeah yeah and then this I just found it this way, but look at all the little stones nestled inside the larger stone. Beautiful. I mean, Beautiful. how crazy, like that looks like a skull or bone type form rather than all rock to me, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. and then this is a piece of gorgeous wood that I found and I looked at the darker parts and I thought, okay, I got to draw with my pen and give it almost like a little bit of a landscape feel and utilize some of that. And then I just left it on the beach for someone to find. Beautiful. So Beautiful. there you go. Yeah, a little yeah. art trips. Well, uh, but you, you know, there's also swag, you know, so uh, <laughs> brought, brought home a, ceram a couple of ceramic cups from Maine. Yeah. I love these, you know, they're metal. Oh, that's they so have the ceramic around. I always love these. So I have a you few of them. You take those camping out. with you, Mr. Faulkner. If I went camping, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> or hiking. You, if, you're, if you're hike a day hike and you strap it to the outside of your pack. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then, of course, uh, you got to get oh. stuff to stick on the, on the refrigerator. It's all about oh. me, which is the abbreviation <laughs> name. So that's I, I like that. Are you gonna are you gonna put that on your car and the bumper maybe? No, no, we're gonna we're gonna put it, it's right up on the refrigerator because it Rich. is all about me. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, of course, I couldn't I couldn't not get this book. Oh my gosh. It's uh, the men of, of Maine who were at Gettysburg, and, and oh. it's just coincidental how many of them actually were played a, an important part. So you're right, I love history. I, I haven't bought a book in a while. And I found that kind of fascinating. I make them, but how come I don't buy them? So it was yeah. really good to buy this book. Yeah, so, well, yeah, swag. I would expect nothing less from you than to bring home a book like that. And I'm sure you saw many, many historical, beautiful, architectural and monuments, as well as, you know, anything related to uh, things like Gettysburg. And I was mentioning that War of 1812, you know, you're going to you're going to happen upon places that were involved in mm -hmm. parts of our history that you know up until you know you're when you're a kid you just read about this stuff but then when you actually yep. get to go there oh my gosh everything comes to life in your mind yeah. that you read about becomes real yeah i don't i don't know about you but you know uh i'm a sucker for a, a historical marker <laughs> Just ask <laughs> yeah. anybody who knows me. Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to not stop the car and pull over. Okay, wait, we got to go look at what that says. You know, my gosh, there's got to be a lot of them in Maine. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. And all there's the way through, you know, we drove through Massachusetts and New York, um, and Ohio, um, and Pennsylvania. New York, you know, driving through the, uh, seeing the, going through the Mohawk Valley where the Mohawk Indians used to live, and just you know. Um, yeah, War of 1812, Revolutionary War, that stuff, that's fascinating to me. I love to drive through a place and stop and say, this is what was happening here 250 years ago. It's not um, some kind of uh, fantastical thing. This is where it happened, you know, that, that kind of experience. And, you know, living in the U.S., which is one of the more, you know, younger formed countries uh, of its kind. Um, you know, when you talk about 200 years ago, uh, it's really not that long ago in your mind to think, you know, I was born in the 60s and stuff that was happening, you know, during World War II was just, you know, a hop, skip and a jump prior to my being born. It really wasn't, you know, so, 
when you live in places where the history is much longer, it's probably harder to do that. But for this place in time, you know, it's a little easier for me to just transport myself, you know, 200 years prior or 100 years. I mean, wow, yeah. it's not that long ago. Right, right. Yeah. Still and Mackinac, Mackinac is a perfect place to give yourself that experience, you know, to really just allow your imagination to relax into that because they have kept the place pristine. Yeah. Mackinac, right. I mean, it look, it really does feel like, and there's no cars, there's no engines, no cars, you hear any, any, about you know, unplugging, uh, you don't have great service for your phone, which is a godsend. You know, you can take pictures, but you know, your Wi-Fi is going to shift here and there. And then, uh, but the other part is, you know, you don't realize until you get yourself away from automobiles and that sort of thing, how the slowing down of the pace really does change the makeup of your chromosomes. Yep. And getting the feeling too of, you know, being creative to me, the, the great uh, teacher is nature. And yeah. to align myself with that uh, is just the idea of like, I remember standing on the porch where we were and I could, every once in a while, we were a good, you know, quarter of a mile from the shore across the, these golf courses. But every once in a while, you could hear the shore, the water pounding up against the rocks. Ah. And just that sound, you know, um, the pattern, the uh, constancy, um, this natural expression. Uh, like I said, it just recharges batteries, my batteries. Oh. And uh, it's a good thing to do. And, you know, you like, I'll finish by saying, you know, I don't have to do this on a week long trip someplace else. I can also take a walk every day and just notice nature. Nature Absolutely. is like, uh, like in that book, uh, The Color Purple, uh, there was a, there's a line from it, uh, Alice Walker wrote it, um, God gets pissed off when you don't notice the color purple. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's you know, awesome. Nature, nature's oh. yelling out at us with this beauty. Um, yeah. So. It's so true. Mr. Faulkner, you speak very good words that uh, I will live by till our next episode. In the meantime, we should close this out with yeah. music Something from profound. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we thought of uh, a song and, and I'm forgetting what it is. <laughs> Green Acres is the life for me. Palm living is the Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan just in your countryside. I want to say cheers to you, you podcasters who subject yourself to our zaniness and mm -hmm. the way of the world. Thank you for joining us. I'm Eugene Clark. And I'm Matt Faulkner. Yes, he is Matt Faulkner. And we'll see you next time on Save World Make Our. Bye, everybody. New York is...